Hello students, today we will be learning about toxicology. The fact that you are alive and watching this video is quite amazing. Every minute of every day you are exposed to potentially lethal chemicals. I am not just talking about man-made chemicals but about many such chemicals which are present around us such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, vitamins and many other compounds that enter into our system by means of our food and if these happen to be more you will be wondering what is happening with you to make matter worse our body uses daily these chemicals for their daily businesses for all the processes that take place in your body to keep producing chemicals and consuming these chemicals Lethal chemicals can get inhaled in your body in various form, ingested, absorbed and not only that but also it is being created and processed inside your body system. But yeah, it also gets excreted and is thrown out from your body as well. And this whole together is what we can say is that makes a human being what it feels to be alive. But if you think of it and you cut off all these crazy chemicals from the processes and I am sure that you will be dead by that time. To stay alive and thrive, a body needs to balance between many such things that we consume. It has to be not too little that it is not enough for a system as well as it should not be very much that a system is having a lot amount of it and it is not able to handle it. The trouble is this balancing act of the body if it gets interrupted and it is yes getting very easily interrupted and by that little of something or more of something can destroy the whole system and get you out of it. The Swiss physician Passless was credited, credited with the title the father of modern toxicology. He stated that all substances are poisons, there is none which is not a poison. Which means every uh, thing that is present on earth, every particular kind of substance can be a poison. And there is nothing which is not a poison. But then how to differentiate a good thing from what is poison? The right dose differentiates a poison from a remedy. These were the words given by Parsilis. Talking about toxicology, it is the study of poison of various harmful causing harmful effects on living organism. We normally think that a poison can be a stuff that can easily kill us such as a snake venom or any chemical pills. But toxicology looks at the adverse effects of all the substances. Chemicals are there everywhere, air, food, water, clothes and mobile phones as well. A cup of coffee contains more than a thousand different chemicals. You, me and all the living things are made up of different organized chemical forms and these chemicals are used to make heart, lungs and different such organs, tissues. Chemical reactions are continuously taking place in our body and helps us to keep us alive. So again, psychology, what is it? How can it be defined? It is defined as the branch of science that deals with poison and poison can be defined as any substance that causes a harmful effect when administered either by accident or design to a living organism. So moving and talking to you about the history of from where the, these poisons come, how people were utilizing it and how was it been recognized. So talking from the late BC period 2700, Chinese journals had been written and have reviewed uh, information on plants and fish poison. Even in 1900 to 1200 BC, we have Egyptian documents which have noted 100, 800 medical poison recipes. Back in 800 BC, Hindu medicine included notes on poisons and antidotes. 50 to 880 Greek physician classified over 600 different plants, animals and mineral poisons that were found. Moving 
over 250 to 8 400 AD, Romans used poison for execution and assassination of any uh, people who were boycotting their uh, leadership. The philosopher example Socrates was executed using hemlock poison for teaching radical ideas to the youth and to be thought to be spoiling their brain. Avicenna in the uh, Islamic authority on poison and antidotes. They had a book which was basically prescribed for the antidotes against various poisons. In 1280, Spanish rabbi many mourners write first aid book for poisoning titled as poisons and their antidotes. Socrates and Cleopatra are the two famous victims of poisoning in history. Socrates was forced to drink hemlock for corrupting the youth of Athens. Uh, after Socrates, the other example that is Cleopatra committed suicide through the bite of an asp, a poisonous snake. It Moving further, as we all know about Parsons, he found about something as a miner's disease. Miner's disease was found in the miner who were digging metal and heating it up to extract the metal from the ores, that is from the rock. While doing so, the vapors coming out during the heating process were inhaled accidentally by all the workers present there. While studying that, Pastors discovered and thought that if these vapors can cause any one person sick, then why not to use these chemicals or these metal forms to kill the cancer cells? And this is how the basic of chemotherapy was laid. Later in 1761, Hill linked up that the sniffing of tobacco was also leading to cancer that is by a piece a little amount of tobacco when they are kept in between the tongue okay it can cause mouth cancer or oral cancers and later in 1775 Fort linked scrotal cancer and soot in the chip, uh, chimney sweepers moving further Italian physician Ramazzini in 1713 published De Morbus Artificium which talks about diseases which are caused in various workers that is occupational disease or occupational uh, toxin creating these diseases. The Spanish physician Orfilia in 1815 establishes toxicology as a distinct scientific discipline. Back in 20th century, when we talk about Paul, he was the one who pioneered the understanding of how toxicants react with living organisms. He experimented with various bacteria and viruses to see the effect of toxicants on these bacteria and the living cells. Organic chemistry was in its infancy in 18s. In 1825, phosphogene and mustard gas has been synthesized. These two chemicals were used in World War I as war gases and as late as the Iraq-Iran war which took in the late 20th century as we know. So these are few pictures on the left hand side is from the germ uh, from the Iraq or uh, the late war which was in during World War One by German where they launched the operation disinfection. A furious bombardment followed by release of chlorine gas. The green grey gas is spread for more than six kilometer wide and almost one kilometer deep. There were various other chemicals which were also used as warfare such as tear gas, chlorine, phosphogene and diphosphogene as well as mustard gas. In 20th century, Raquel Carson alarmed everyone about the use of pesticides 
to kill various insects or pests that were harming the agricultural productivity and she had mentioned about the situation in her book silent spring so we'll just have a short look or short view over how uh, she found out and what were the effects of these pesticides these pesticides were actually been introduced during world war second world war and people uh, you know cannot came to know about these pesticides they started using it very vastly but not only the these chemicals were killing those pests but also were entering into the water bodies and in return were killing the human beings of ddt a potent synthetic insecticide that was so revered for its ability to kill malaria carrying mosquitoes during world war ii that its discovery led to a nobel prize this diabolical weapon of modern science saved millions of humans but killed billions of insects man with this newly discovered force has at long last gained the upper hand in our age-long struggle DDT was soon billed as the solution to every insect pest. And in time, upwards of 80 million pounds was being sprayed annually in the US alone, applied to everything from vast forests and cropland to spreading tracts of suburban American homes. This was the advent of better living through chemistry, and DDT was the wonder child. Once a bug comes in contact with DDT, he's lost. The effect is disastrous. Basically like a chemical holocaust against these insects, it drove lots of insect populations down. And it was enormously effective. But Carson's research showed the massive spraying of DDT and other insecticides was causing a hidden harm. Carson forced us to consider an invisible threat, something that we might not smell, you might not see, but of which had all kinds of unintended consequences. We poison the caddis flies in a stream and the salmon runs dwindle and die. We poison the gnats in a lake and the poison travels from link to link of the food chain, we spray our elms, and the following springs are silent of robin song. She alerted us to the possibility that in trying... So basically, this was happening that the DDT which was sprayed for killing these insects were entering the food chain and from one to the another was entering to the higher level of organisms. And thus, later on, these chemicals were banned and being completely removed from the system. Talking about toxicology, it was rapidly, rapidly evolving during 19s. Discovery, let's talk about the discovery of radioactivity. 1996, Henri Becquerel discovered that uranium spontaneously emitted a mysterious X-ray-like radiation that could interact with photographic film. Curie. In 1898, they reported two new elements, polonium, named for Marie's native Poland, and radium, the Latin word for ray. They also coined the term radio. That year, Pierre Curie and Henri Becquerel were nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physics, but Marie was overlooked. Pierre took a stand in support of his wife's well-earned recognition. His wife's well-earned recognition, and so both of the Curies and Becquerel shared the 1903 Nobel Prize, making Marie Curie the first female Nobel laureate. In 1911, she won yet another Nobel, this time in chemistry for her earlier discovery of radium and polonium, and her extraction and analysis of pure radium and its compounds. She opened mobile radiology units during World War I and investigated radiation's effects on tumors. However, these benefits to humanity may have come at a high personal cost. Curie died in 1934 of a bone marrow disease, which many today think was caused by her radiation exposure. Marie Curie's revolutionary research laid the groundwork for our understanding of physics and chemistry, blazing trails in oncology, technology, medicine, and nuclear physics, to name a few. For good or ill, her discoveries in radiation launched a new era, unearthing some of science's greatest secrets. Follow, we will be talking about 
the Bhopal gas tragedy as one of the toxicants, the first large-scale biosail to determine whether these new chemicals were beneficial or harmful to laboratory animals. So like DDT came up, everyone was looking towards the pesticides which were very helpful for the agricultural field. So out of one such pesticide company, even this company in the Bhopal was producing pesticides and the release of methyl isocyanide killed many thousands of people in the small village in 1984. Nine chloride is used to make plastic components such as PVC pipes, wire coating and plastic kitchenware. It is volatile as so the exposure is by inhalation as against food or by water. There are various occupational hazards being recorded. Prior to 1974, workers were exposed to about 1000 ppm causing vinyl chloride illness. It is a potent heptotoxin at high dose, carcinogen with a long latent period at lower dose, apparently without effect at very low dose. Thalidomide is a brand name given as immunoprin claimed to cure anxiety, insomnia, gastrics and tension. It was used against nausea to elevate morning sickness in pregnant women. But the counter effect of these drugs was seen in West Germany during 1957. Shortly after drugs were sold, 5,000 to 7,000 infants were born with malformed limbs and it was said that only 50% of these children survived. Various chemical medicines that we use such as aspirins, vitamin tablets or various other calcium tablets are also being produced chemically and any intake of this in a heavier form can lead to various disorders or sickness to any particular person. Moving ahead with different areas of toxicology, toxicology can be defined or divided sorry, rather into different areas such as clinical, veterinary, forensic, environmental, industrial, regulatory and behavioral toxicology. Talking about toxicologists, they are Sherlock forms of the health world using science as an evidence to protect our bodies to the point that the DNA will stay for what we are. They know we cannot escape from these potentially harmful chemicals which are present in the environment as we need them to remain healthy in this environment so that we can stay alive and survive but they also know that if any wrong stuff gets into our body in the wrong place at wrong time things can get messed up very fast as a result this is a powerful science because it gives us a key to stay alive and survive in this world that would otherwise be dangerous place to thrive in. So if you are wondering if your shampoo is good for your hair or eyes, whether the burger and fries have low fats whether how much chocolate can one individual eat impacts on fertility and the development of offspring although human safety is the original concern of toxicology ecotoxicology is the equally important study of how chemicals affect wildlife and the ecology of our environment ultimately we know there's no such thing as a safe chemical but we also know there is no chemical that cannot be used safely by simply limiting the exposure Yes, so there is all these chemicals which are present that we call as toxin or a poison if used appropriately in an appropriate amount can be treated as a medicine. Talking about toxicologist, after knowing all this we can say that after all they turn out to be your best friends and helping you to stay alive. That's all for today and the next lecture we will be learning about phytotoxins and here have a look about it. 
plants are constantly under attack. They face threats ranging from microscopic fungi and bacteria, small herbivores like aphids, caterpillars, and grasshoppers, up to large herbivores like tortoises, koalas, and elephants. All are looking to devour plants to access the plentiful nutrients and water in their leaves, stems, fruits, and seeds. But plants are ready with a whole series of internal and external defenses that make them a much less appealing meal or even a... Compounds toxic to microbes and insects are also produced, often tailor-made for a specific threat. Many of the plant molecules that humans have adopted as drugs, medicines, and seasonings evolved as part of plants' immune systems because they're antimicrobial or insecticidal. 